In the world of modern spaceflight, two billionaires have stood at the forefront, Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos. Musk's SpaceX and Bezos's Blue Origin have each promised to revolutionize access to space, develop advanced reusable rockets, and pave the way to a multi-planetary future. But while both companies set similar goals, the results could not be more different. Blue Origin was founded in 2000, actually two years before SpaceX, yet in the decades since, its progress has been noticeably slower. For much of its existence, Blue Origin focused on the suborbital New Shepard rocket, a vehicle that, while visually impressive, only reached space for a few minutes at a time. In contrast, SpaceX went orbital just six years after founding and quickly pushed ahead with human launches, satellite constellations, and heavy lift rockets. Given Blue Origin's ambitions and funding, this divergence has major implications especially now, as 2025 data shows how far SpaceX has surged ahead and how costly that lag has been for Bezos. In this video, we'll break down how Blue Origin lost the commercial space race to SpaceX and what that defeat means in terms of time, opportunity, and billions of dollars. But before we go further, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss our upcoming deep dives into the space industry's most critical turning points. SpaceX's dominance is rooted in three critical areas, rapid development, commercial scalability, and sustained contract wins. Its launch vehicles, Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, and now Starship, fly regularly and with growing reusability. In 2024 alone, SpaceX launched 138 orbital missions. By mid-2025, it's on track to hit 170. That's nearly one launch every other day. Blue Origin, in contrast, launched its first orbital class rocket, New Glenn, only in January 2025. While the flight did reach orbit, the booster was lost on descent. For a rocket announced back in 2012, that's a 13-year development period with only partial success. Meanwhile, SpaceX was catching and reusing its super-heavy boosters as early as March 2025. The contrast extends beyond rockets. SpaceX's satellite internet network, Starlink, has become a core business with more than 7,500 satellites in orbit and an estimated 4.6 million customers. It generated around $8.2 billion in 2024 revenue alone more than half of SpaceX's total income. By comparison, Amazon's project Kuiper, supported by Blue Origin, only launched its first 27 satellites in April 2025. It faces a tight Federal Communication Commission deadline to get 50% of its constellation in orbit by mid-2026, a goal many experts believe it will miss. Then, there's the lunar race. In 2021, NASA awarded SpaceX a $2.9 billion contract for its Starship human landing system, selecting it over Blue Origin's Blue Moon. Blue responded with legal protests that were ultimately rejected. In 2023, NASA did award Blue Origin a $3.4 billion contract for a future Artemis V crewed landing, but SpaceX remains the more advanced player, with actual Starship test flights and NASA-certified cargo missions already under its belt. Blue Origin's ambitions haven't been small. The company has proposed a commercial space station, a lunar lander, and even an orbital logistics platform called Blue Ring. It has also successfully developed the BE-4 engine, now powering ULA's Vulcan rocket. But none of these projects are fully operational or revenue-generating. Most are still in testing, conceptual stages, or years behind schedule. While SpaceX has continued its rapid pace by adopting a fail-fast philosophy, testing, iterating, and improving quickly, Blue Origin traditionally relied on a slower, analysis-heavy process. Industry observers have linked this to internal cultural issues. Reports from past employees described micromanagement, low morale, and a bureaucratic environment that stalled innovation. Bezos has taken notice. In recent years, he began importing Amazon executives into Blue Origin, initiating leadership overhauls and imposing a faster, more aggressive pace. The goal was to emulate the high-efficiency model that made Amazon a logistics powerhouse. 
However, such changes came late, after SpaceX had already pulled ahead in nearly every measurable domain. From a financial perspective, the gap is just as stark. Bezos has poured an estimated $10 to $15 billion of personal wealth into Blue Origin, largely by selling Amazon stock. Despite this, Blue generates minimal revenue. Its income comes mainly from a few suborbital New Shepard flights and small government contracts. It remains a cost center, heavily funded but not yet profitable. SpaceX, meanwhile, is becoming a financial juggernaut. By 2024, it brought in $13.1 billion in revenue, with Starlink as its largest contributor. Independent valuations put the company's worth between $200 and $350 billion. And unlike Blue Origin, SpaceX attracts constant private investment and reinvests cash from its customers, including NASA, the U.S. Space Force, and private satellite clients. The contract disparity alone is significant. In 2020, Blue Origin lost out entirely in the Phase II National Security Space Launch Awards, where SpaceX and ULA shared over $3.5 billion in contracts. Only in 2025 did Blue finally win a smaller slice, just seven missions compared to SpaceX's 28. In the meantime, missed contracts translated into billions of dollars of lost revenue and strategic influence. These missed opportunities compound over time. For instance, Blue's delay in developing New Glenn meant that Kuiper had to rely on third-party rockets like ULA's Atlas V for its first launches. This not only increased costs, but also limited Amazon's ability to scale quickly. Every month of delay for Kuiper is a month where Starlink continues to cement its market dominance. So, has Bezos truly lost? In practical terms, yes. Blue Origin remains years behind SpaceX across orbital launch, lunar operations, satellite broadband, and revenue generation. SpaceX is executing high-profile missions, launching thousands of satellites, and earning substantial income from both commercial and government sectors. Blue, by contrast, has only recently reached orbit and is still fighting for relevance in its target markets. However, there's nuance to this conclusion. Bezos often emphasizes that his vision is long-term. Blue Origin is not a short-term commercial bet. It's part of his broader vision of enabling millions of people to live and work in space. In that context, short-term revenue and market share may not be the only metrics that matter. Still, as of mid-2025, the scoreboard is clear. SpaceX has achieved what Blue Origin aspired to do, and did it faster, more efficiently, and more profitably. Musk's approach of building fast, failing fast, and reinvesting revenue has reshaped the space economy. Bezos's slower, more cautious path has cost him critical momentum and billions in lost opportunity. Looking ahead, the pressure is on Blue Origin to accelerate development and prove it can be more than just a Bezos-funded passion project. New Glenn needs consistent success, Kuiper must meet deployment targets. The Blue Moon Lander must fly before Artemis timelines slip. If these milestones are missed again, it could cement Blue's role as a secondary player in a race it once aimed to lead. For now, SpaceX stands at the top of the commercial space sector, not just by technology, but by contracts, revenue, and proven execution. Whether Blue Origin can mount a comeback remains uncertain. But one thing is clear. The gap is wide, and the cost of closing it will be measured not just in money, but in years. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.